welcome to our channel or welcome back to the channel if you're new here our channel is a family channel surrounding all things parenting pregnancy infertility um, and some vlogs and so if any of that interests you please um, consider subscribing but today I'm doing a end of pregnancy Q&A and that is because I'm about one week from giving birth or sooner it could happen at any point um, so just so you guys know, we did pre-record some videos. We're not going to be doing videos for the first like one or two months after the baby because we um, are going to be bonding and busy and things like that. So we did pre-record some videos, but it's probably not going to be our exact normal schedule. So just keep your post notifications on so you can see when those videos go up. Um, but this video will go up by the end of this week. Um, I might be in labor by then. I might not, uh, but I'm going to schedule it so it will go up. Um, but I wanted to end the pregnancy and the pregnancy content with this end of pregnancy q and I posted about it and I got a few questions, not too many, so it's not going to be too long, but I did get a few really good questions that I thought were worth sitting down and answering for you guys. Sam and I were going to do this video together, but time just did not allow for that tonight because we kind of had to multitask parenting, filming, and all of that. So since it's a pregnancy related video, I just took it over. Um... So it's just a few questions, uh, but I thought it was a good way to wrap up the pregnancy and just give you guys a little Q&A. The first... Okay. What is your advice for someone who else who is pregnant after infertility and struggles with the anxiety that comes with that? My husband and I struggled with infertility for five plus years. We had two rounds of unsuccessful IVF and then could no longer afford it. After that, we pretty much given up, but about four months ago, we found out that we were pregnant and I am now currently almost five months pregnant with our miracle baby girl. Okay, so basically this person is someone who struggled with infertility for five plus years um, and finally got pregnant after that and is having anxiety due to the fact that this pregnancy was so unexpected, came after infertility, just came after a long, hard stretch. I totally get it. I went through that too. Um, so first and foremost, congratulations on your baby girl and you know, you're almost halfway through that pregnancy so you'll be meeting her soon. Um, I definitely understand that feeling of getting pregnant after infertility and then having anxiety about the baby, about how in the world you got pregnant because you said that you guys um, struggled, went through IVF, it failed and now you just got pregnant on your own and there's probably a whole bunch of questions like why did it take five years, all those things. There's also this sense of like, you're just protecting this precious thing that took so long. Not that every pregnant woman is not feeling that protective spirit for their child, but after you, babies that are born with it, like through infertility, you know, through that journey, they are, it is such a long journey that once you do get pregnant, however you do get pregnant, or once you do become a parent after infertility, however you do, there is a level of like, shock and just feelings that you have to work through still um i think we've talked about that in prior videos as well um so i definitely understand your feelings the anxiety that comes with the pregnancy the questions and all of that that comes after such a long journey to even get here and and now that you're pregnant um i definitely dealt with that more with my first daughter because she was the one that was kind of like right after infertility and we didn't even think we could get pregnant we've never been pregnant before her um if you guys want the full infertility like story of our infertility story i'll link it but to answer this question i really think that um doing things that are gonna help you feel more connected to the pregnancy is really really good um, living in the moment is really good it's really like obviously when you're pregnant you have to kind of live in the future because you have to prepare for your baby but just living in the moment in those times of anxiety is gonna help you stay grounded um, for me um, you guys know that I was really focused I still am this pregnancy but even with Anna as a first-time mom I was really focused on having the calmest pregnancy calmest birth and hypnobirthing and meditation really really helped me with that so I would definitely recommend hypnobirthing um, hypnobirthing is a type of meditation you can do throughout your pregnancy that kind of um, helps you get rid of anxiety, it helps you get rid of fears about pregnancy, about childbirth, about all of it. It also helps you connect to your baby before they're even born and it also helps you during labor and you can even do it during labor. 
Um, the one I use the most and my favorite is actually a YouTube channel um, called Hypnobirthing by Anya. So I'll just link her channel in this video. She has a con entire playlist. So she starts with every trimester. She has different ones. She has ones for specific specifically for the trimester and kind of what you're going through mentally, physically. Um, and she has meditations specifically for different things like birthing fears. Um, I think she has an infertility video as well, like a meditation. And she even has ones for during labor that you can listen to to kind of calm your nerves, get you through labor, um, work through the breathing techniques, all of it. So her YouTube channel is very a very calming place and that's mainly what I use for my hypnobirthing. Um, also I would say do things that you always wanted to do. Like really enjoy your pregnancy, you know. Um, talk to your baby daily do the maternity shoot do all the things that you were so afraid to do that you might be holding off on or that you always dreamed of doing but never thought you would or could do them now because you're in the moment now so live in the moment do the hypnobirthing do things that are going to calm you pregnancy yoga is also beautiful and very good um i used to use a youtube channel as well during when, during my pregnancy with anna i don't remember the name but i will try to find it and link it but there are great pregnancy related yoga videos um as well um now in this pregnancy i've actually joined a virtual yoga pregnancy class that goes by trimester so i did the first and second trimester and i'm doing the third currently um and even i would say if you if the meditations and the hypnobirth things really help you stay in that positive mindset i would continue them past pregnancy they also have postpartum ones because postpartum can also be a mentally challenging place even for people who didn't deal with infertility, but especially for people who did, um, you can have extra anxiety, postpartum anxiety, different things like that. And the postpartum meditations also really helped me. Um, I think that was on a different channel, but I will try to find all of that and link it in this video. But those are the things that helped me. Everyone's different, so whatever basically helps you stay calm, that's what I would focus on in my pregnancy. And whatever helps you bond with baby, you can bond with your baby before they come into this world. So the, you are carrying the baby, um, you are pregnant now currently, and so you can talk to your baby, you can find ways to bond with your baby, you can uh, talk to the belly, you can play music for the belly, do all the things that are gonna help you feel like mama and just bond with baby and it's really going to help settle your anxiety and just get you into the mode of like you're actually pregnant this is actually happening and moving forward from that place of stuck infertility if that makes sense so i hope that makes sense i'm sorry if that was a long answer but that's my advice um how has this pregnancy been different from your first so this pregnancy definitely was different from my first um one because we were struggling with infertility when we got pregnant with my first um and then this pregnancy was kind of like not not totally unplanned but not planned so it was more of a different type of surprise but very wanted physically though this pregnancy has been harder um i can say i had morning sickness with this pregnancy or morning sickness because it was all day and mostly at night actually so I had morning sickness with this pregnancy. I never had morning sickness with my first daughter. Um, I was definitely, I've definitely been more exhausted this pregnancy, but I don't think that that's just pregnancy. I think that's also because I'm caring for a toddler while pregnant. Um, I think that adds to why I was more exhausted this pregnancy. Um, you guys know that my pregnancies are high risk. My first pregnancy was high risk and my second one is also high risk. Um, but there's definitely been more high risk things in this pregnancy um everything is under control and we are healthy but definitely took a bit of more management i will talk about the specifics of that in a future video because i do want to make a video all about like high-risk pregnancies once i give birth so but yeah that's how it's been kind of different um what made you take a pregnancy test so um i never posted the pregnancy the actual i recorded my actual pregnancy test i decided not to post it and to leave it as an intimate video for me and sam um however i did post a video um in the video that we posted that we were pregnant with baby number two i explained that i took a pregnancy test yeah you know all those things um i didn't think i was pregnant but in my first pregnancy one of my first 
symptoms was that when I would brush my teeth, I would gag and it just made me nauseous. And I never really had that with anything before I was pregnant with my first daughter, but I didn't know that that was a pregnancy thing because we didn't know we were pregnant and we were struggling with infertility, like I said, with my first daughter. And I didn't have any other pregnancy symptoms yet with baby girl number two over here, but um, I did have that symptom and my period was two days late. And I just decided I have this pregnancy test in the cabinet, let me take it. And to my surprise, it actually came out positive. So that's what made me take the pregnancy test was that I had that one little slight odd symptom that I remembered from my first pregnancy. Um, but it was very early on. Both times when I found out I was pregnant, I was only about four. My first, with my first daughter, I was only like four weeks pregnant. And with this baby, I was five weeks pregnant. So both times I found out very early on. Um, are you getting induced again and how do you feel about the induction process? So, um, if you guys haven't seen my full pregnancy story of like why I'm high risk and things like that, I don't want to get into it in this video because I want this to be just a Q&A, but I'll link it. Um, but as you guys know, yeah, I did get kind of unplannedly induced with my first um, because of some high risk things that came up, my blood pressure spiking at the end of the pregnancy and things like that. Um, yes, this time I'm having a planned induction unless she comes beforehand. So, yes, um, my induction is very soon. <laughs> um, I'm not going to give a specific date here, but it's very soon unless she comes on her own before that. So I will be getting a scheduled induction unless I go into spontaneous labor in the next few days. Um, I have been having a lot of breast and hicks, a lot of things that lead me to believe that my body is preparing for labor which is a great thing even if you're getting induced because you want your body to kind of follow suit and be as prepared as possible um they're just they haven't been following a consistent pattern or anything to make me like say i'm in labor or go to the hospital or anything like that so as of right now unless i unless otherwise something happens in the next few days yes i am having a scheduled induction to reduce the risk of previous complications also because of some new complications it's just safest to be induced before um, the 40 week mark so that's what we're doing how do I feel about the process of induction I have no issues with it um, I had a very good I know some people have very negative induction experiences but I also think that that's universally for birth you can not get induced you can go into spontaneous labor and have a really bad experience unfortunately you know things can happen during labor you can also be induced and have a really bad experience. It doesn't matter whether you go into spontaneous labor or induction. There is always a chance that things can kind of go wrong. You can have a traumatic birth experience and that's very unfortunate. However, my first pregnancy and my first birth and my first induction experience with my daughter, Anna, was very good. Um, I went into the hospital to be monitored for, like I said, a jump in blood pressure um they then told me that i was actually in early labor and they were able to stabilize my blood pressure but they kept me and they gave me a little bit of pitocin they kind of like halfway induced me because i was already like in the beginning of labor anyway and um i progressed well it was a long labor it was 18 hours but that's to be expected as a first time mom so i'm hoping this time it's a little bit shorter but we'll see um but i had a good experience i was able to push her out it was beautiful and you know it was a beautiful experience was it painful yes was it hard yes was it um a little bit like diff different things just because you're getting into like was it you know was it magic and rainbows because you're in labor no it's still hard it's still painful that's part of labor but it was beautiful in the sense of like finally meeting my daughter getting birth to my daughter getting to hold her getting to just have that experience of giving birth after so many years of struggling and all those things um so i don't have a problem with induction i try to focus on the fact that to me if you have a positive mindset your body will follow so for me i'm just focusing on the positive mindset i know the date that i'm supposed to have my induction so i'm focused on that like i said i practice hypnobirthing meditation and yoga in my pregnancies even outside my pregnancies i do that but more so pregnancy focused during my pregnancies um and i really think that helps me keep a positive mindset and i really think it helps my body follow suit some of the things i've been doing physically to get my pelvis to open up to hopefully start dilating before the induction is using an exercise pregnancy ball 
and doing specific pregnancy yoga that's meant right like for before labor um so hopefully mind body and soul will connect and we'll have another positive induction um process that is my hope and that is my goal and that is what i'm focused on mentally and physically but i have no um no bad experiences or anything to say about induction i do think that i wouldn't personally get induced um if it wasn't for the high risk factor so like i wouldn't do a selective induction but because it's safest because of high risk factor um that's why I choose to do it. Um, that's why I sign off on it, like the doctors want me to and whatever. And like I said, I try to prepare my mind and my body and we've had a good experience for the first time. So hoping for it again. Um, how do you feel about having two daughters? I am thrilled to be a girl mom. Um, you guys know that this is my last pregnancy. I'm thrilled to be a girl mom. I think that, you know, the sister bond is going to be amazing. I don't have any sisters. I'm an only child. I don't have any sisters, so I don't know firsthand, but I think that the sister bond is always special, and I think that raising daughters is very special. Raising young women is going to be special, and I just, you know, I wasn't honed up on gender either way in either one of my pregnancies. I just was blessed to finally have my babies and you know with Anna like I said she was our baby after infertility and with our daughter our second daughter now she is completing our family so I wasn't holding up on gender I wouldn't have mind a boy but I didn't mind a girl at all um, but God gave me two daughters for a reason and I think everything happens for a reason and I am totally thankful and I think it's gonna be a great experience to raise two smart beautiful daughters and for them to have that sister bond uh, what are some things you may do differently with baby number two? I think that we did a good job at being very intentional with um, our first daughter. Um, the only things that I think might have to change are things that specifically like baby number two is just a different person and she might need different things. So I, it's really hard for me to answer that question. A lot of people have asked me that. I don't know right now maybe I'll do an update short or something like that of things we did differently with baby number two because I don't know who she is yet I know who she is inside and I've bonded with her but I don't know specifically her needs as it comes to like a difference between her needs and Anna's needs I'm not too sure so as of right now I don't really plan on doing anything quite differently um, except um, I don't really plan on doing anything quite differently except like we did intentional bonding with my first daughter but I think I want to be very intentional even as a family of four because now my daughter also has to bond with her sister um, so we'll see how that goes obviously it's gonna be different with two kids than one and it's gonna be a totally different experience but I'll keep you guys posted maybe I'll give some advice on going from one to two when I have a few months under my belt so stay tuned for that stay tuned for like more of an answer um, what's the next question tips for preparing do you have any tips for preparing toddlers to become siblings okay so yeah I do we've done a lot so toddlerhood at first first I'm gonna say toddlerhood is from considered from one to four or one to five depending on which pediatrician you speak to but basically that's the range and I think it depends if you have a one-year-old versus a two-year-old versus a five-year-old because a five-year-old can really really understand and I think you could pre prepare them a lot more versus if you get pregnant when your child is like one years old it's gonna be really hard for them to understand your pregnancy and I really don't know like I mean, we, Anna was about 19 months when I got pregnant. She's two years old now. She turned two in March, so she's been two for a couple months, and she's starting to hit those two-year-old milestones and really talk more, communicate more, understand a lot more. She's like, she has a total personality. She, she can understand a lot more. Um, but what we've done with her, and so the only tips I can give, is we bought a lot of books about becoming a sibling, um, I don't have the book with me now and I don't she's taking a nap and I don't want to go in her room and get it and wake her up but um, 
I will link the book that I we got one of the main books that she likes that teaches them about becoming a big sister that one specifically becoming a big sister there's ones that say sibling big brother whatever um so books and picture books were recommended by a pediatrician because kids learn by pictures and obviously a elementary school toddler book is going to be a picture book and so getting you know picture books that have really good illustrations and show what it is to be a big sister or a big brother is going to help read that to them multiple times um, one of the other tips that our pediatrician specifically gave that I have seen to help a lot because I, I can see her understanding more and I actually see her understanding and she answers and, and, and I see the development in that is my pediatrician said, you know, toddlers are nosy but in the best way. And so explain to them over and over throughout your pregnancy what's going to happen. Mommy's having a baby, you're going to have a baby brother or you're going to have a baby sister mommy is pregnant mommy needs to eat more because she's pregnant mommy needs to rest more because she's pregnant like explain everything explain who they're gonna stay with when you go have this baby so for us that's um sam's mom and my mom are watching anna while we are in the hospital having baby girl number two so i keep telling her that you're gonna stay with your grandmas while mommy and daddy are in the hospital and then we're gonna bring your sister home like explain the whole process to them and don't just do it once obviously because toddlers are repetitive as are many people so re at, throughout your pregnancy explain what's going to happen in you know toddler friendly detail and you know just keep explaining it to them and keep involving them one other thing that we're doing to kind of keep her in the celebration of the new baby is that we're buying her big sister gifts so i bought her for her big sister gifts me and my husband bought her um a book to learn to write with like the tracing letters because we're teaching her to write slowly um, and so I bought her that with like the big letters that you can trace. I also bought her an emotion puzzle because I thought becoming a big sister, she's going to have new emotions and, you know, as a toddler, you know, little person, big emotions. So it'll help her learn how to deal with those emotions. Um, so yeah, find something that your kid will love, a toy or something, get them involved in the process, explain the process to them, read books to them, talk to them about the new baby. I also have her kiss her sister I have her kiss my belly I have her rub my belly she feels the baby kick I tell her what it is so just explaining to them in those details keeping them involved in the pregnancy keeping them involved with the baby is gonna make it a joyous occasion for them they're gonna know that it's something good it's something happy and they're going to follow suit on that um, what is baby girl's name okay guys um, I'm not going to share baby girl's name because we are doing a video. It is going to be one of our pre-recorded videos. So it is going to be a video that you see after baby girl's already here, but before we start posting content again. But you will see it. We are posting it. We're actually making that video like tomorrow. And the reason we want to share it via video is because there's a very special meaning behind it. And we just want to make a little video sharing her name and sharing the meaning. So that's why I never say it in any of these videos. But in the name reveal, you will get it. Um what are your top tips for giving birth so my top tips for giving birth go along with some of the things that i've already said preparing so physically and mentally doing things like pregnancy yoga the exercise ball keeping active as much as you can but keeping a balance between acting act, activeness and rest because you need both for pregnancy and kind of preparing for labor but definitely like light walks yoga pregnancy ball also mindset is everything so Whatever you need to do to keep your mindset positive, do those affirmations, do the uh, hypnobirthing, do the meditations, talk to someone who keeps you calm, talk out your emotions, whatever is going to keep you positive in mind, body, and soul, that's what you want. Um, also specifically for labor, I would say stay hydrated, um, ice chips are amazing, bring something that has a little bit of sugar to kind of keep you pepped up, but not enough sugar to like make your blood sugar go high or anything so snacking on things this is you can snack as long as you don't have the epidural in yet so take advantage of that time where maybe you don't have the epidural yet and eat something like I remember when my first started they got me like an icy because it was hot things that are cold are really good for labor um, movement during labor so if you can do a birthing ball during labor if you can kind of change positions go on little walks throughout the labor and delivery unit whatever um, and just being present I would be I would focus on being present in that moment be present even with your pain and be present with your baby that's my last question you guys so I'm very happy that I got to sit down and do a last-minute pregnancy Q&A with you guys I hope 
that um, this helped anybody and it was just like an interesting end of the pregnancy. If you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below. If not, I won't see you guys next week because we're not posting. Um, baby girl will be here. Um, however, uh, like I said, we did do some pre-recorded videos. We're not going to be posting general like up-to-date content because we're going to be bonding with our baby for at least the first month and a half. But we did post, we did um, pre-record some videos that I'm going to try to get up. The schedule might be a little sporadic. It might be like every two weeks as opposed to every week. But just keep your post notifications on and you will see them. Um, so I will see you guys soon.